Lou, it is so nice to have you on the show today. Thank you. It's absolutely my pleasure to be here. Thank you. I feel like it, I mean, my goodness, we have to go to someone who knows about this because cons, is it conservatorship or conservatorship? Alex? Conservatorship. Conservatorship actually has just recently, because of everything that's going on with Britney Spears, has become a really hot topic. And it's funny because I am curious as to why I haven't really heard about it, considering I have had people in my house who've had dementia and who've had, mm -hmm. you know, issues with their estate and not being able to self-manage. But let's just start from the beginning. For those of us who aren't familiar with the term and what it means legally. Can you just give us kind of the short explanation of what that is? Sure, a conservatorship, in, in some states it's called a guardianship. Okay. Those are really interchangeable terms and each state, all 50 states, have a distinct and separate statute that govern this area. And you have to know, depending upon the state that you're in, how that statute works, what the laws are, and how the courts are gonna treat your case because a conservatorship is a legal proceeding which is intended to appoint a conservator or a guardian to fill deficits for people who have needs. They can't make their own health care decisions. Okay. They can't manage their finances. They need help with daily living. And it takes a lot of different forms depending upon the individual's needs, but it also has a different edge to it because in some of these proceedings, it kind of crosses over from your functional need to okay. your civil rights and your right to self-determination. And that's where Brittany's case has really brought out yeah. a lot of uh, people who are now looking at this and saying, I don't want that ever to be me. Right. I don't want to ever give up any of my civil rights. Right, right. Wow. Okay, good. I'm glad that you made that distinction because I watched that um, the New York Times series that's on FX and I watched right. Framing Britney Spears and it did kind of show, I mean, of course, like all document, you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt, you know, with most documentaries, but I do think it did a good job at kind of showing where there might be some holes in the system, which, um, you know, people on their own can do their own research. But something that I do think needed to be clarified, and I'd love to clarify with you. So who is, is this designed for? I know you mentioned people who can't manage, but how do they, how do the courts even know if that person needs this? Yeah, Let, let's start with the most basic. Um, we have a wide spectrum on the autism spectrum of people who from birth yeah. can't make their own decisions and need assistance. And generally their parents at some point are gonna petition to be appointed as guardian or conservator for a child with a developmental disability okay. to be able to take on the, the role of that guardian. And in most states, parents have that natural right until the child turns 18. Right. But once the child is emancipated at 18, they have to get a guardianship or conservatorship to be able to continue to guide that child's life. And, mm -hmm. and in New York, I'm a New York practitioner and a litigator in New York, we have a statute that is separate from our general guardianship statute just for people with developmental disabilities. Okay. But if you started life as a normal functioning teenager, 20 something, 30 something, and then all of a sudden you have an issue. And, and with Brittany, it was her mental issues and, and the ability to manage her own life in effect, which had all kinds of ramifications for her. Right. In most of the cases where there's a guardianship, it's brought on either by an accident, people have a car accident, they're in a coma, they're in right. the hospital, they haven't done any planning, and there are ways to plan around this, okay. doing legal documents that we'll talk about perhaps. Okay. And it's someone who then is in a position where they don't have a decision maker, so the court has to intervene. Okay. And to do that, someone has to go to court and petition the court. And then everybody gets to bring their lawyer. Okay. And it is a litigated proceeding. And what's at issue in some of the cases is, is the person really incapacitated? Right. Can they handle their own decision making? or not. If they're in a coma, it's pretty clear. Right. They need somebody <laughs> to handle these things for them. But if you're functioning and many seniors hunker down in their homes, in their apartments, they don't want anybody interfering or bothering them, right. but they're hoarders. They're, right. they, they don't get to the doctor. They're not managing their medical conditions. Their bills are going unpaid. Right. When do you intervene? That's when it's up to usually a family member 
to step in, petition the court, and seek to be appointed as a guardian or conservator for that individual to help them function on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. You get controversies. Yeah. You get what I call pre-mortem or pre-death probing, where the kids are fighting over mom and dad's money before mom and dad are dead. You hear that so and, often. And that's one that becomes a hotly contested guardianship. There are many, even high profile cases, uh, someone by the name of Brooke Astor, who was a socialite, the Astor family. Right. The family was on the Titanic. She had a son who abused his power of attorney and started to steal her money. And her grandson petitioned for guardianship because the doorman wouldn't let him in the building to see his grandma. And that culminated in criminal prosecution and conviction of the son and his attorney for conspiring to defraud his mother. So it happens, even the best of families. Wow. Wow. Okay. So it's up to people like yourself who get appointed by the client, by someone who says, I want to be the conservator of, of this person. Yes. So you have to kind of sift through what is real and what might be their opinion using yeah. different like medical records and all kinds of things, right? Yeah. It, what I like to say to clients is it isn't what you know, it's what we can prove in court. Okay. Because in people's minds, they've already come to a verdict, right? They yeah. already know what they want right. the conclusion to be. But how do you present a judge who doesn't have any background in this case, who is hearing everything for the first time? Right. How do you muster up and marshal the evidence that's necessary to overcome your burden of proof? And usually that burden of proof is pretty high, especially when you're dealing with the rights of that other individual. Those rights are protected in most states by statute. So you have burden of proof where you have to prove that they're unable to know what their deficits are to manage their affairs, they're in need of a guardian and that you're the best person to be that guardian. So we have to build a case. Yeah. And as you might imagine, when you're trying to bring that kind of evidence to bear, it gets expensive. Can there be a way where that person can be reevaluated without, without all of this hullabaloo of the mm -hmm. years and years of um, research? Yeah, that, that becomes a real dicey question. Okay. And the answer is, of course, there are procedures. You can go back and petition the court to modify the conservatorship or guardianship order. Mm -hmm. And you can ask the court to re re-intervene okay. and to change or even lift. And, and one of the things in Brittany's case that they're contemplating, they haven't said they're going to do it yet, is to totally remove the conservators. And she has two now. She has her father, along with Bessemer Trust Company, right. who we work with. They're, they're based in New York City and a very fine trust company to manage her property yeah. and then she has a separate guardian to manage her personal affairs. Okay. And so she actually asked that the personal guardian be made quote unquote permanent subject to her seeking to lift the entire guardianship. So right. those are some of the subtexts here okay. where the general public and the media don't get all of the back, the backstory. Yeah. And there's always a backstory and everybody has their own backstory. Right. And that's what comes out in court. And that's why it's not what you know. It's what you can prove. Where is there evidence yeah. that's an admissible form that you can bring to court to show that the facts are what you say? Do you feel that there are any weaknesses in this law that need to be reevaluated and um, looked back on to change? Sure. The every statute has to be reexamined in light of current technology, in light of the current schools of thinking, and. In, in New York, we have a commission that reviews that statute on a regular basis and makes modifications. Okay. But the law is just paper. Right. Where this really hits the road is in the courtrooms. Okay. And in certain states, there are very good specialty courts that deal with these kinds of matters. But in other states, you're in a general courtroom with a lawyer who may be hearing a car accident case one day yeah. and a conservatorship the next. So the entire court structure has to be, I think, redesigned to and reimagined mm -hmm. to take into account the subtleties in each individual's mental state and people's abilities. And as they say, if, if, you, are, if you have strange behavior and no money, you're crazy. If you have strange behavior and lots of money, you're eccentric. So, <laughs> People kind of get away with things for a long time because they can cover it up and other people 
adult protective services come in and try to intervene on their behalf. And a lot of these fights, unfortunately, end up being over money and proper planning goes a long way. Yes. Oh, it does. Oh my goodness. Well, that is definitely something, something to think about. Like, don't just think about your will, but think about all of these other things that could happen to you before you pass. Yes. So, I appreciate this time that you're giving us. Thank you so much. Absolutely. My pleasure. And it's been a pleasure talking with you. 